Today's video is brought to you by Omaze. Visit omaze.com slash Lottie Mar for your chance to win a Mercedes Atlas Airstream. We're Lottie and Margaret, and as we move forward with our van build, we've decided to document it a little bit differently. We're working on some bigger projects on the van these days, but we'll only be sharing them once they're completed. That way it's easy to follow along with a single project instead of spreading the work over multiple videos. In the meantime, we have some fun micro projects to share with you. This will actually be really cool. So the 3D print we have for the monitor is here. Then we're gonna have a layer of buttons, which I'll share soon, and then the shelf. And the shelf goes flat this way and down. So you can put a coffee on it, so you can you know, put everything that you want there. And then we're gonna pad these cool sunglasses holders because we never use them now because we're scared that we'll scratch something. So we'll have that hole padded and this will be so comfortable. People don't think about customizing their cab, but the fact of the matter is when you're living in a vehicle, you spend a lot of time here. So we wanna make sure that everything is as comfortable and practical as possible. We wanna be comfy cool. <laughs> this will work epic. So I'll use this as a, as a template. I'll take it apart, use this only, and then uh, it has attachments here. So I'll keep those two on a 3D print. So we can print the same thing, choose the angle we want and have a shelf, really convenient shelf for keys and all the stuff. And anybody will be able to duplicate this same thing in your Ducato. And this will be a really interesting test for me to print from a PTG and see how it performs on a sunny mm -hmm. and a heated car. Mm -hmm. That looks like it actually fits. No way! <laughs> this will be lifted, you know, the bag will be lifted. Yep, yep. And this front will be lifted so it sits in the middle only, touching there. And then the rest will be sitting on these supports here, these two. And we have two more here, mm -hmm. so I'll just bolt it in, bolt it in, done. So sick. That is sick. <laughs> yo! Yo! <laughs> Look how it fits on the 3D printing wow. bed. That's a tight fit. <laughs> This one was faster because it's a prototype. I realized I could have just printed a frame like this to save some filament. But yeah, sometimes I'm faster in making than thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe a lip around. I'm not sure about it yet. What I know now that I can uh, just cut along these edges the anti-slip uh, rubber mm -hmm. and then uh, wallet keys, coins can sit and lift right on the top of this. And that's an interesting test whether this is going to be resilient towards light and heat. I'm only printing from PTG because it has higher heat uh, resistance and it should be more resilient for these conditions. So, and I don't know, it might not work, but you know what? I want to learn. Mm -hmm. I want to learn what it can handle. Yeah, this is just a silicon, silicon mat that makes it anti-slippery. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I love these anti-slippery mats. Uh huh. Seriously, like 
as, as long as the thing doesn't flip away, you know, as, as it doesn't roll away. So once you have a bigger surface, anything can live on this because nothing slips. Look at that, seriously. How am I supposed to demonstrate this? That it doesn't slip anywhere. So now this following stage will be those switches. Now we'll take out the space. And then have enough space for a button and a little icon on top of it. <laughs> it's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Cause baby I feel real good and I wish I would. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Everybody watch out. Watch out now. I'm ready for a good time, and I came to groove. The whole band's here, and we came to move. Got a fresh haircut and two new shoes. We're here all night, like we got nothing to lose. I'm coming out the jacket, cause we're turning up the heat. I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat. It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets. I'm coming in hot, and I can't be beat. Watch out now. Baby, watch out now. Watch out. I'm going up, I'm a man on a mission with no misses and I'm looking for love Oh, I'm just looking for love This is exactly why I like 3D printing because as we progress and we have these new ideas for the switchboard we can easily tweak the existing models and print them again and make them always a little bit better So now we're going to have the switches on the top of a radio like this Yeah, yeah <laughs> so this is going to be manual reversing camera on, not just with the reversing gear. Then this is going to be reversing light to see a little bit more. This is going to be stereo between a starting battery and a leisure battery, mm -hmm. on and off. This will be switching between reversing camera and grey water release camera. That is pointing <laughs> down to see where we go. And this will be... <laughs> this will be gray water release light with no light so we actually see something in that camera and this is actually gray water release button mm -hmm. so as you see down with the camera you can even light and see that you're exactly where you should be then you press the button and it does <laughs> Baby, I feel real good and I wish I would It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good, baby watch out now. Everybody watch out Watch out now Everybody watch out I think this would do. This would do. It's That's pretty great. epic light. It really does this wide beam. So for reversing, that would be pretty cool. Or when we are dealing with something here, I can just tilt it down. So I would just have to make a custom brackets, which should be a pretty simple job. And the camera will go right here. We use these custom holders that we custom make them for cyber bikes. That, uh, that is pretty convenient to hold a light in. So I'm thinking now that I can customize it cut this off, keep only this slim part and I can easily bolt it to the back of the van. Today we're tackling the cab's wiring situation. On both sides of the van we have two thick protective hoses running towards the living space. Along the driver's side we have the wires for the speakers, in the kitchen, the reversing camera and the back door light. 
On the passenger side, we have wires for the gray water camera, light and gray water release, along with our subwoofer and an additional speaker. Most of these wires won't be required until later in the conversion, but Lottie is doing the prep work now, so we don't need to be digging into the guts of the dashboard to run additional wires later. The wires are originating from the monitor, then stopping at their respective locations. These will eventually be attached to the new buttons that we created earlier in the video. That's good to secure it now and then to make sure none of the wires will fall out. This is my most favorite recent tool that is for zip ties. So it tightens them and you set uh, how much pressure, how much you want to tie them. And then it also cuts it at the end so you don't have this sharp edge. And now I can run it inside and I know this is pretty well protected. Yeah, <laughs> really lovely tool. That is a neat, neat job. The reversing camera is being wired to automatically turn on when we put the van into reverse. We're jumping in with the signal wire for the taillights, so when the van goes into reverse and those taillights turn on, the screen also gets the cue to switch to camera mode. So this will be the first test to see if we did a good job wiring the camera. So we don't have a gear in, if I turn the ignition on, and this should now turn on, great, that's successful. And now if I go reverse, it should essentially switch to the reversing camera. Yo! Oh, oh. I purposely bought these cameras because these have these two wires. So if you got this green one, you could have noticed the parking lines in the screen. So by disconnecting this, you essentially get rid of that bloody line that really bothers me. No more parking lines. I mainly do this because somebody in the comments said it leaks. So this is just extra. Something extra. So this slides over. And now this a little bit. And that's gonna be filled too. Look, I let the joint be strong. That could be good. I think I hope. This mount definitely soft upping screws would work, but. This is going to be such a vibration and everything that it's better to have a bolt and a, and a nut. Wow, look at this. <laughs> this will be even cool for maintaining bikes and stuff that I can angle it down and see what I'm actually doing below the garage. And once I tweak this exactly with a reversing camera, they'll be probably pointed down like this. That will be pretty good. Gonna hit the ground running, baby, I'm running, baby. 
this light is super strong and we have it in addition to the two tail lights. It's not wired to turn on when we start reversing like the camera is, but it's wired separately. So if we're parking somewhere at night and we want to see if there's potholes on the ground, we can slap that baby on. It's also a nice like scare factor if we hear someone behind the van. We can hit the switch on the dashboard and get a light and like really scare someone. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> that something shoots this at you? <laughs> this is the same light that we use on the cyber bikes and on the winter bikes. So we know that they're high quality. Now it's completely waterproof and we're going to be able to keep this externally as like a security and an additional feature, I guess. Pretty awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. We've been working on these smaller projects in the meantime when we are making decisions for big ones. Like next video, we should finally have these custom water tanks and we're gonna be insulating and mounting them. If you have any tips about insulation of water tanks, throw them in in the comment section. See you next week.